Hello and welcome to another video. So this one is a limit problem and we're gonna take the limit of 1 over x and an integral. <laughs> okay, so it means this kind of limit is something that you don't see until you have learned how to do integration or at least you have learned the fundamental theorem of calculus because if you don't know how to integrate yeah, you can't do a limit. Usually limit shows up at the beginning of calculus one, but now if this shows up, it means there's something else you have learned that you need to use. So let's look at it. So generally, when you see a limit problem where x is going to a finite number like 0, 1, 4 or whatever that is or pi because it is a real number and not infinity the first move is always to plug in the values so what you're gonna do first is plug in x equals 0 into this function okay now let me show you what's gonna happen what's gonna happen is this is gonna become the limit as x goes to 0, the integral of, well, I can make it 1 over, z well, uh, that's already a problem, okay? So, because when you divide by 0, um, and then you're going to multiply by something, well, let's see what this is going to be. And this is going to be um, sine 3 times 0, okay? And this is going to be e to the t squared dt. Um, this is going to be the same thing as the limit as x goes to infinity. Well, if you look at this, 1 over 0, let's say, goes to infinity, and then we'll be multiplying by this integral. This is going to be the integral from sine 3, 0 will be sine 0. What is sine 0? Sine 0 is 0. Oh, it's going to be e to the t squared dt. Okay, something you learn from the fundamental theorem of calculus is when you integrate from the same number to the same number, you're going to get zero, okay? Remember that generally, um, uh, the integral of f of x dx from k to k is basically, when you integrate this, you're going to get a function. You're going to evaluate that function at k minus, sorry, at k, the top one, minus, you're going to integrate that same function, I mean evaluate, at k, the lower boundary. So it's f evaluated at k minus f evaluated at k, so your answer is going to be zero. So whenever the top and lower boundaries of integration are the same, you're going to get zero no matter what the function is, even if you don't know how to integrate the function. Just know your answer is going to be zero. And that's what we observe here, that if we do direct substitution, which is the first attempt you must make, okay, do not start using techniques make sure you do direct substitution first. So when you plug it in, you're going to get 0 to 0 of this. And whatever you get after integrating this, you plug in 0, plug in 0 is the same thing. So you're going to get 0. So it appears now that we have a situation of the limit as x goes to, sorry, this is 0. x goes to 0 of infinity times 0. Remember, this is the indeterminate form. So you cannot take this limit. So what should we do? Well, every time you get the indeterminate form, you have to look for a way to write it as a fraction. h of x over g of x, okay? You have to find a way to write a fraction, take the limit, and apply L'Hopital's rule, see if it works. And L'Hopital's rule says, take the derivative of the top, take the derivative of the bottom, and if you now plug in these, zero. If it works, then that's your answer. If it doesn't work, see if we can take the derivative again. So let's go back to the original problem and see if we can make it into a fraction. So just by looking at this, you have 1 over x multiplied by this integral. We can choose to write this as the limit as x goes to zero of the integral is going to be on top. That's sine 3x of e to the t squared dt. 1 over x can be, we can just put the x here. So this expression 
It's exactly this. And remember we said if we do direct substitution, we're going to end up with 0 over 0 because these two are zeros. Okay? So now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says that when you have any limit you're taking, the limit as x goes to, it doesn't matter, x goes to, let's say, k, okay? And you end up with f of k over g of k such that when you evaluate f of k, it gives you 0, it becomes the, so if you now get this as x goes to, you get this to be 0 over 0. I just wanted to see that if your limit is 0 over 0, at the end of the day, this is not allowed. And this is where L'Hopital's rule becomes important. It means that if f of k gives you 0 and g of k gives you 0, then why don't you take the derivative? If you take the derivative and g of k does not give you 0, then you're good. Okay? At least you don't get 0 over 0 again. Then you're good. So, Let's see if we can take the derivative of the top and take the derivative of the bottom. So let's apply L'Hopital's rule. So this is the short way. Okay, let me just write it. L'Hopital's rule. So if we apply L'Hopital's rule to this, we're going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to 0 of the derivative d dx of this integral 0 to sine 3x e to the t squared dt divided by the derivative of the bottom d dx of x. Now what do we get? I know the derivative of x is 1 so this is the limit as x goes to 0 of the bottom is going to give me 1. What is the derivative of this? This is where we have to go back to our fundamental theorem of calculus, okay? The derivative of an integral, if it goes from a constant to a function of x, in this case, all you have to do is evaluate this function at sine 3x and then multiply it by, multiply it by the integral, so that the derivative of the function, okay? So, let's see how this is going to work. By fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that what we're going to have is this derivative. I'm just going to show you and then I'm going to write it there. Or let's just write it. It's going to be e, so you replace this t because you're doing this with respect to t. Replace the t with this top function because this is a constant. So what we're going to have is, let's get rid of this. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, what this means is we're going to be replacing the t because this is dt. Replace the t with whatever is here, okay? So what you have here is a constant. You have a function here. Hezekiah. You can't do that. I have to do it again. Okay. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, if you have the derivative ddx of the integral from a constant, I'm going to call it, say, a, to any function of x, f of x. Let, no, let's, let's call it g of x. Okay? And then you have f of, f of t dt. Let's make it this way, f of t dt. So I want you to see the analogy here. f of t is your e to the t squared. You have your dt. Then your g of x is sine 3x and your a is 0. Remember, your, the lower limit or boundary has to be a constant, has to be a number. What would be this derivative? This simply says... You're going to take g of x and plug it to replace the t. So this is going to be, but now you have integrated the function. So it's going to be f evaluated at g of x. Okay? But remember that you're taking the derivative. So if you're taking the derivative, the derivative of f, because if you take this, this is what you should get if there was no derivative. Okay, minus f of a. 
if there was no derivative. But remember that f evaluated at a is a number. So if you now take the derivative ddx of this, what you're going to have is because this is a function, it's going to be the derivative of f. You have to apply the chain rule. It's going to be the derivative of f multiplied by the derivative of what's inside, which is g prime of x. This is the chain rule we're applying here, minus, well, this is a number, the derivative of a number is zero. So what you have here is the derivative of f. But what really is the derivative of f? <laughs> That's what we've got there. Okay, so you notice that it's going to be the derivative of f, but now it's going to be evaluated at g of x multiplied by the derivative of this. So it's more like the chain rule you're applying. So it's going to be f of g of x times g of x. The derivative of g of x. So this means I'm going to replace e to the t squared. This is going to become um, e to the, my t becomes sine 3x sine squared 3x. Okay, and that's this e to the sine squared 3x <coughs> multiplied by the derivative of this function, which is going to be 3 cosine 3x. That's what I get for the top. And now I just need to evaluate at x equals 0. So if I plug in 0, here I'm going to have e to the sine squared 3 times 0 multiplied by 3 cosine 3 times 0. Well, that gives me e to the, um, this is going to be 0, sine squared 0 is 0, e to the 0 is this e to the 0 multiplied by 3 times cosine of 0. That's 1 times 3 times 1. Cosine 0 is 1, so my answer is 3. So this limit is actually 3. Hope you learned something in this video. If you did, like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.